Hey, welcome back. All right. Chris, you good? What's going on? It's me, Kerbin. Let's jump into this episode. <laughs> yeah, let's dive right in. <laughs> yeah, let's get into it. All right. Everybody's on strike. Everybody. How do you feel? I feel as though... I don't know. I thought... You want me to read, about, about, me to read the, about it first? Uh, no, because I was thinking about the what the... Was it a producer that said, we want to hold out until they can't afford their rents no more? I think it was like an executive. Executive that said that? Yeah. Yeah, that's not cool. But, <laughs> you know. I don't think it's cool that they said that. No. But ultimately, that's how it always is. That's always how it is, right? So it makes me think about um, COVID. Okay. And there was this, the idea that it was the great resignation, right? Like, we the people have taken our power back mm -hmm. and everybody quit. There was a month where there was four to 10 million people quitting their jobs. Mm -hmm. And people are only working remote and we're only doing this and we're only doing that. And we have the power. And I remember just thinking this can only last so long. I mean, imagine all the people who became like blockchain experts right. and um, day traders mm -hmm. and were like, I'm never working a conventional job ever again. And then they like run out of money and then the businesses like maybe they failed for a bit or like. They went down for a bit, mm -hmm. and then they just, like, started working again. And that's just kind of how it is. Uh, so I think my mindset was, like, a lot of those people thought, I'm free from this rat race. I'm free from this, like, circle of working for X amount of hours or years or under the, the circumstances that I don't want to work in, mm -hmm. and uh, I'm going to just do whatever I want. And then facing the harsh reality that you're a cog in the system. Right. Very few people can get out of it. And you did it and you realized how great life could be on the other side. But you didn't have the mechanism to keep you there. So you had to get back to work. Yeah. And that's the mindset that this whoever this person is, this executive said. He, he told you, the, he or they, whatever, told you the game. They gave right. you the game ghost, right? you know, and they don't have to agree to whatever your demands are. Um, <laughs> and unfortunately, fortunately, the studio has enough content backlog and new things probably that they can hold out for a little bit. Yeah. You also have to remember, too, these studios don't just make money on new movies mm -hmm. or movies. Mm. Like if you think about Disney This is just off the top of my head They have TV Streaming mm. Merch yep. Sports Real estate yep. An acquisitions team mm -hmm. Glo Global immersion A resorts business A hotel business uh, cruise business. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they're they're set for a, while. a live entertainment business. Right. So it's like, okay, you take out one piece of the business. We also okay, great. Maybe a lot of those businesses are built off of films. Mm -hmm. We already own Mickey, right? We already own <laughs> Cinderella. Yeah. And all these things. So when you go to the cruise or the resort or the hotel or the bliss, this or the that or the park or the whatever, okay. those characters are still there. And we're going to make money off of all that. And I think that's where they're like, we hold all the power. Right. If not most of the power. Mm. Um, so, yeah. Them saying that was the, a secret they probably shouldn't have said out loud. That like, look, dude. It's our money. We're just giving you a little bit of it. Mm -hmm. And uh, we can also not. We could just, we could hold off for as long as you want to play this game. And now the actors are in on it. The actors are in on it. I At first I thought it was a solidarity thing. 
But it turns out that we, Fran Drescher, yeah. um, has demands as well. President Fran. President Fran. So I read something that was not super great. And I'll tell you this. I, I, I tend to stand with the business people, you know, because most people don't really recognize all the pieces of um, that need to come together to make a successful business, right? Like most people don't, but there are times when, come on. So there's a story that came out that said they would pay actors or like extras to get their likeness kind of recognized by AI. Mm -hmm. And then they would, they would like redistribute it in any film forever. Right. And they would pay them a one time check right. of a hundred dollars. That's, that's not great. I get it. Like I kind of, I get it. Cause you're, but I also don't because let's say now extras are not going to make residuals in no. movies, right? Like they're not, but they're going to get paid day wages and that's fine. Right. And that's but like usually just that project. Yeah. Just for that project. Yeah. Um, but at least they can make there's professional extras. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? There's people yeah. whose entire life is about that. Now, I'm also going to say this. It is okay for things to no longer be valuable. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like it's okay for you to be in a business that ends up dying. All right. Because think about like companies that used to do commercial printing mm -hmm. and then now everybody owns a printer, and then eventually printers no longer, like most people don't even print things anymore. Right. Imagine if you were in that industry, and then they're like, oh my gosh, they're creating commer like, uh, uh, commercialized printers you for home. Basic than that, like Blockbuster. Sure, yeah. It's totally All okay for you to be in an industry that's no longer going to be right. needing your services. But it's kind of icky. You know, it's kind of icky. Yeah, it just, it sucks, you know? Yeah, it just it sucks. Feel good. Yeah, and it's like, I, look, the Grammys said they're okay with AI, essentially. They just not, so let's say you made a song mm -hmm. that was written by AI, but you made the songs. Right. So the aspect of the songwriting cannot be nominated for a Grammy, but you playing the music can, can be so it's essentially like look we're gonna embrace it to the best of our ability and even though it sucks and i don't like it i get what they're trying to do to say look we don't technically need to spend x amount of hundreds of dollars on extras anymore but the on the aspect of like songwriting come back to the grammys the artist doesn't necessarily always write the song anyway. So yeah. in that case, nothing's really changing all that much. It is changing because the artist may not write the song, but other writers do. Right. So they're cutting them out. I get it. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. Or like, let's say it's not songwriting. Let's say it's, um, let's say you wrote the song with the AI, you used AI to, Perform the song Right Same thing You know Let's say it's a Britney Spears song Random But It's a Britney Spears song And then now Britney's like ah, My voice is not doing so well AI will sing the song But I wrote it Or my team wrote it or Whatever And the song is a hit Right Now you can get an, an a, a Grammy for writing the song You just can't get one can't for performing for actually performing Okay that makes sense. So Yeah It's It's icky you know, it's not fun to hear. It sucks. But you also cannot determine what is valuable or not to a company. Right. You know what I mean? Like, it's not your money to spend. So, um, in the beginning, extras already only get paid for their day of work. Right. They don't get residuals for the movies. Correct. But they're also not going to be used in another movie. Correct. Like, Cut and paste it out of the, the project they worked on into another project. That's true. That's different. And that's. 
but they're not paid for their likeness. Currently, they're yeah, yeah. They're they're paid for their time, right? Because they're just like a, a figure in the back, and it it makes me think about the um what's the name of the guy that died in the car accident, and then they had to finish the Fast and Furious movie. Uh, Paul Walker. Paul Walker, right? Didn't they use some kind of AI technology to redo his face on his brother? Yeah. On his brother, it makes me think about that because it's like, well. Technically, they use his brother as a body, mm-hmm. and then they just put his face on it. Right. That should have been the first indication that That's this coming. is going sideways. Yeah. The, the wave of AI yeah, is coming. Yeah. Um, and it's it's really good. Uh, like face mapping and all that. Like the CG on that has changed exponentially. So much Since money getting movie, dumped into it. Fast, whatever. So. I guess I'll read it to you. Uh, So the writers are on strike, and now the actors are on strike as well. So um, it's the first time since the 1960s that both the unions have stage walkouts simultaneously. The um, last actor strike against the studio was in 1980. Um, The walkout will halt productions worldwide and cause more economic pain and disruption for film and TV, already shaken by the writer's strike that started May 2nd. Dang, it's been a, a little minute now. Um, yeah. All right, so I believe a lot of this has to deal with the, with AI, um, but also it has to deal with the fact sorry, that with streaming, the actors are making less and less money. Right. So that means they have to do more and more Uber Eats. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> or like gotta go back to the bartending. Yeah, you gotta go back to the bartending. Yeah. Look, um one thing I'm not a huge fan of is comparing what the actors are making to the CEO. And I'll explain why, because I know this is not gonna be a popular take. Um look, I know most people think that CEOs do absolutely nothing. Mm-hmm. And it's just they sit on their super yacht. And they just chill out and they make sure that you get nothing and they get everything. Right. However, oftentimes, again, like we're cogs in the system, right? right? And when these CEOs oversee things, they're not just overseeing the project you worked on or whatever, like piece of this whole thing. That you that you worked on, mm-hmm. so or this small piece of the business. So if if we were to just like parse it out, really just like get into the weeds of it, most of these companies are like super companies. They're like fifty companies all put into one in this like global effort to make sure this thingamajig makes money every month, all the time. And if you were really to separate. The job duties, we're talking about like X amount of hundreds of thousands or millions of dollars per company that you're responsible for, at least on the highest possible end. And to come up with the ideas or to manage the team or whatever. So I don't necessarily think the best strategy to to argue is to say how much the CEO makes versus how much you make. The reason why is it's the same as when you're asking for a raise at your job. The, 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 the argument is not to say, well, my boss makes this. I should make this. Mm. Right. No. You're right. You should probably come at it in a sense of like, look, I've worked on X amount of products. My contribution makes, makes the product. Like, if I'm the writer, I'm going to be like, look, my my script is the biggest cog in this system. And when all put together the way that I envisioned it in my script, the f- seed to this whole tree, it ended up making a billion dollars. Right. Let's just say it's like the Mar- the Marvel film, right? Right. It's, it made a billion dollars. The Avatar film. Okay. Now, this you cannot discredit what other people did. So you're the writer, you have that piece of the puzzle, then the director, then the 
the art, the creative directors, then the actors, then like all these people came together to make this project. So I would probably like percentage it out to say, well, if it wasn't for this script, which is like blank percentage of the success of this project or the success of these projects, um, it would be a failure or it just wouldn't exist at all. Right. So if it made, if you made 10 movies that made $10 billion, we should not be making a hundred thousand dollars or whatever it is. Which I think that is the argument, isn't it? I think some people like you see on social media, they're going to say, Hey, they're making the big bucks. I should be making the big bucks. But I think for the most part, the argument is exactly what you're saying. It's, Hey, we have a huge hand in this project we should be getting a compensated a, a just amount and not as maybe yeah. it's not as much as executive producer or whatever producer or whatever but it's like way more than we're, we're getting you know? yeah I'm, i i mean the article the argument a, a lot oftentimes on the internet seems to be look at these ceos look at these ceos look at these ceos and I'm not sure who's putting out that narrative. That's why it's like, that's why I'm responding in the sense, because right. there's just this list of CEOs and their, um, and their compensation that's going around uh, that yeah. I'm just like, okay, I get the point that you, you feel as though, as if these are people that are just brain dead idiots that sit in a boardroom and do nothing right. and they're making all this money and you need to share the wealth. But, Wealth is not really designed to be shared. You know, it's kind of more designed based on production, return on investment, right? right? Exactly. So I'm guessing a CEO can turn around and say, look, you paid me $30 million. Um, like Bob Iger versus Bob Chapek. Mm-hmm. I don't know if you guys know who that is, but Bob Chapek was the guy that Disney ousted to return Bob, Bob Iger. Right. Sir, so... JPEG, they can turn around and say, this guy sucks. He, his, all of his ideas made us lose money or we we have bad PR or we had to kick, kick, uh, kill X amount of jobs or whatever. This guy sucks at what he does. We had to bring Bob back, Bob Iger. So if we pay him $30 million, can he make this company X amount of billions of dollars? Yes or no, consistently. You see what I'm saying? So it's like, uh, I was in a meeting where the CEO one time was talking, and he's a guy that makes X amount of millions. But he said something along the lines of, like, I could just pay myself a dollar, but whatever I get paid is such a small percentage of the overall picture. Well, yeah. So it's like, sure, that's the argument, but I think there's a better argument. It's just like asking for a raise. You know what I mean? Exactly. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, I think it's kind of a dangerous uh, narrative to put out because <laughs> these are these CEOs are the ones who are arguing, like who you're arguing with. Yeah. You know what I mean? Exactly. And just like Bob Iger said, he said something about like it being disturbing that yeah, something like they, that. the actors are making. Yeah, like, like they're, this is their demand. Of course he's going to feel that way because you're turning around and saying, like, you don't deserve the money that you're making. And he's going to be like, you don't deserve the money that you're making. You know, look, I think it's great to strike. I think it's great to ask what you're for. Ask for what you want. But I also think you have to make a healthy strategic choice about how you're asking and how you're getting it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, I think that's just... uh not an anomaly, but just like one narrative that's getting put out is the list of ex- of CEOs and what they make. Yeah, I think for the most part, it's hey, we deserve more than what we're getting. It doesn't have to be, obviously. I'm not asking for a fajillion, but give me what I'm worth. Give me what a half a fajillion. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Um. So yeah, now the actors are on strike as well. The writers are on strike, um, and. Let's see what the the actors want. What does Fran want? Um, Okay. SAG-AFTRA is, uh, it represents TV and radio artists, uh, about 160,000 actors, broadcast journalism, 
journalists, actors, hosts, stunt performers, and media professionals. Is Seacrest SAG after? Probably is. Most likely. He probably has like 100 episodes already recorded, though. So. <laughs> yeah. There's nobody who works harder than Ryan Seacrest right. except for Nick Cannon. Right, right, right. right. Um, so they're fighting. SAG after members are fighting for better pay and working conditions as they face a labor landscape transformed by streaming and uh, threatened by artificial intelligence. With streaming services like Netflix, Hulu, and Max reshaping the culture of television and movie watching, the nature of actors' pay has changed as well. In addition to facing declining residuals, true, um, and wages that have kept up with inflation, see, that's a difficult part because inflation is wild. It really is. You know what I mean? They would to keep up with inflation. It would mean that there has to be like an annual change, right? You know what I mean? Yeah. Because technically, they said inflation went up like nine percent, and then now it's down seven percent. Mm-hmm. So, would you be okay with a pay bump and then like a, a pay decrease? Yeah, yeah, like yeah, it yeah. kind of de- that. That's like a while. That's like a yeah. you know, it kind of depends type of thing. Um. Okay, so streaming has also complicated job opportunities since many shows now have shorter seasons over longer periods of time, and actors argue that they have uh, less work available to them. Uh, which is interesting because there's like more shows than ever. Yeah, you know what I mean. I, you would think streaming would add more production jobs. You know, it makes me think about Atlanta because mm-hmm. that show took like three years to come back. Right. You know what I mean. Right. Uh, probably I'm sure because of Homeboy's schedule, the mm-hmm. lead guy. Um, what's his name again? Donald Glover. Yeah, Donald Glover. So I, I, I think about that. Like, is that kind of what they're arguing about? That the there's only I don't know, eight episodes in a season and it takes forever to come back. Yeah, that's true. And then some shows are just done. Like I think Ted Lasso's done. It might come back, but I think it's done. Like, that's there's so many shows. Though. Yeah, I can't true. imagine that. I can't imagine. They're well, not being enough like show, six yeah. More coming out. There's just there's so many platforms yeah. too. Um, so then there's concerns over the unregulated use of AI, which may uh, reproduce an actor's likeness or performance. Has also been a, a point of uh, contention at the bargaining table. SAG members are demanding guarantees on how exactly AI will be deployed by studio and production companies through AMPTP. Uh, is reportedly not budging on the matter. This is a powerful grab, pure and simple. We see what's coming. They can't pretend we won't be used digitally or become the source of new, cheap, AI-created content for the studios. Um, of the 65,000 SAG members who cast the ballot, about 98% voted to authorize union leaders to call for a strike if no deal was reached by July 12th. Uh, back in June, more than 300 actors who publicly threw their support behind a potential strike by signing a letter. Uh, so here's the thing I will say. Dude, strike for what you want. Yeah. I don't think it's going to take that much time to get the actors to be broke for them to get back to right, work. Right, 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 right. That's one thing I will say. The writers, some writers was making some good money. They could hold out for a little bit. Right. They, they could hold out for six months. Well, it's been June, July, two months. Two months. They could probably do another six. Another six, yeah. I think. Actors, they ran out of money yesterday. The strike started yesterday. They ran out of money yesterday. It's it's funny to see the people I follow on Instagram, celebrities or otherwise, talking about striking when you know how they're living. (laughs) Sex. Yeah. I mean, it's like... I. How I feel about celebrities talking about the strike, because y'all already got the money. Yeah. You, you know what I mean? You so it's like, I get you want to stand with, act, like, working actors yeah. in support. But then you're, we're kind of like, well, we're trying to be like you. Yeah. Mm. yeah. And then there's the, like, never working. The, the actors that, like, want to book, but they never book anyways. What are y'all talking about? <laughs> Unfortunately, yeah. But, you know what I mean? But, like, you guys are sag because maybe you were you were extras in a couple of things, mm-hmm. and then you got your card, and boom, you made a short film, yeah. and then you're sag. Yeah. But, like, bro, no matter what the pay is going to be, you're going to do Uber. Right, right. 
Sorry to say. It sucks that there's so many of those because, you know, it's like a diamond in the rough kind of thing. Yeah, and then it skews the amount that people make, too. Because then they could be like, actors only make $7 a year, but we're also counting the 90% that don't work anyway. Right. So because they maybe booked one thing and they made $900 in a year, we're like, they only made $1,000. But it's like, dude, to be honest completely, acting for the most part is a side gig. Yeah. Didn't we hear Sydney Sweeney S- Sydney what was her Sweeney. name Sweeney talk about the fact that she did a season and this is not good I will say this is not good but I don't know her lifestyle she did a season or two of Euphoria and then she still couldn't she had to go do other stuff because she couldn't afford to live the way she wanted to live mm-hmm. again I don't know what her lifestyle is it's important to note because somebody will tell you they're living in squalor and poverty but they have two Range Rovers in the back that they put a thousand dollars on as a down payment and they live in the most expensive zip code and they don't want to budge on anything. I'm not talking about y'all. Right. I'm talking about working actors that work all the time. You may not know their name, but they're doing an episode of something all the time and they cannot afford to live in squalor with a 2004 Toyota Camry in the back. I don't know those too well, to be honest. Because all the actors I know that are working actors be on vacation a lot. (laughs) I'm a non-working actor. I know I got to have a side. Right, right. I got about three or four. You know what I mean? I'm in, I I don't even want to say it, but I'm in the union. But I don't be booking. Mm -hmm. I can't be upset about money I didn't earn. Now, if they want to give me some money <laughs> uh, for, you, for stuff I didn't do, <laughs> send me the check. I'll take it. <laughs> but I'm going to need y'all non working actors. <laughs> I'm going to need the non working actors to relax. Y'all already non working. So, out of that 160 they was talking about, <laughs> it's, it's probably a good 3,500. To 10000 right? that's working. Right. That's probably upset. Hey, get y'all money. <laughs> as far as working, non, there's some non-working riders up in there, too. I see y'all in the street picketing and riding. I'm like, uh-huh. what, show y'all, what show y'all writing on? <laughs> <laughs> well, it was a script. We chopped it around. We've been shopping it around. For about 10 years now. Understood. I get it. I just want to say sometimes the way y'all jumped on threads and I'm not mad, but I'm just saying the way people jumped on threads to support a billionaire. Y'all say I don't like y'all don't like the billionaires. Y'all don't even really like the multimillionaires. When y'all are not really in the business and y'all picketing and riding for The people that are really making the big money who are the actual ones in the streets picketing and doing all this stuff, striking, y'all fighting for them. Just be careful who you're striking for, especially if you're not the one who's really in those rooms. I'm just saying. That's fair. And I support the strike. Yes. 100%. 100%. When you cut this up, dog, put that in there. I support the strike, sure. but also know your role in the industry. Yep. Because I know some of y'all would have been super happy with what they was paying beforehand. Mm-hmm. I know a working writer who has a lot of money. <laughs> For sure. That being said... Are you on threads? Uh, I, my personal, I didn't make one. You didn't make the personal? No. But I did get a one for the company. Yeah, I did the same. One for the um, podcast. Awesome. Follow us on threads at MOI Podcast. We're going to go over by like five minutes, but we'll talk about oh, threads. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so threads, how do I say this without offending people? Go ahead. I feel like it's a TikTok 
that's on the. Uh, I'm sorry. That's uh, it's a Twitter. I feel like Threads is a Twitter. That's what you, what you mean. Like it's missing. <laughs> it's, it's like <laughs> ain't nobody gonna watch this show. Man. <laughs> we just lost every audience member. <laughs> you said it with with your chest too. Yeah. Like it's not a fully developed app. Okay. I feel like it's missing so many things. First of all, I don't like the way it looks. It's just black and white. It looks bare. Like it's missing yeah. something. Well, it's because there's not people feeding ads into it yet. No, it's not that. Give it a mile. No, no, no. It's not that. I don't like the design. Okay. It just looks like, um, you know how when you pick up old people's phones and the, the text Jitterbug is really phone? big? Yeah. Yes. With the That's button. what it looks like. Yes. It looks like the everything is huge. Yeah. And then I'm like, why does it need to be this big? Yeah. And then there's a lot of white. Or I don't have I don't have my phone on dark mode. So oh, to yeah, me the screen yeah. is just bare. And then you can't switch out accounts that easy. Mm-mm. You have to log you out. You have to log out and then log back yeah, in. Yeah. Da, da, da. So I'm like, y'all could have just put that in there. Because you already have it on Instagram. That's what I'm saying. It's literally a double tap. And it'll sh- I don't understand it. And then um I don't know. I just I just feel like the app is not done yet. I feel like I never use Twitter that much. Yeah. That I'm like, oh, this is revolutionary. I also don't like the constant I think the first two days that it was out, there was nothing but posts about there's the the dark Transylvanian castle and it's like this is Twitter and then there's the the like lilies green, in the field or something fields, yeah this is threads I feel so relieved relieved of what just turn off the app you feel relieved that Facebook this is another thing about this like Facebook is known for like spying on you yes. and doing all this stuff and I don't hate Facebook or anything like that but I'm just saying weren't people upset that they were censoring your stuff like why? How, why do you love it now? You yeah. know, don't we hate Instagram and Facebook? Didn't we the, dislike? The argument was the white supremacists were all over posting, and no one was getting dinged for it. And this, that, and the third. Just Twitter? Twitter? Yeah, on Twitter. Uh, I feel like it's the opposite. Weren't they saying that they were censoring your post? And when Jack Dorsey was but initially, yeah, right. But now. Because Elon bought it and was like, everybody can say whatever they want. Boy, that's not true either. Right. One of my pages just got, um, my the company page just got permanently banned. Really? Yeah. Somebody hacked it and then they said something that's on it and then they got, yeah. But that's another thing. Boy, do people hate Elon so much that they will not read. I'll give it to I'll tell you what I'm talking yeah. about. Two things happened. One, he said... I'm going to limit your the amount of tweets you can read in a day because there's like data manipulation. So there's bots scanning Twitter right. to take that information and feed it to like AI or something. Mm. He wrote it clear as day. Nobody saw that part. They just saw I'm limiting the tweets that you could read. Right. I was like, well, it's kind of good because aren't we trying to avoid things scraping the Internet? For more stuff that they can steal right. And put on AI mm-hmm. That's what he said But everyone said that He just wants you to buy a blue check right. And I was like Well that's, that's not what he wrote Everyone just wrote I am see saw I'm lim- limiting what you could see How many people are reading 600 tweets in a day If you have that problem in your life Go <laughs> outside Put the phone down. Plug it in. That's a huge problem. Read a book. You can read as many pages as you want with the books. Take a shower. (laughs) (laughs) Take a shower. Do something. That's really bad that you're freaking out because he said you can only read 600 in a day. The other thing is I saw he reposted the whole like Zuck is a cuck. We should have a penis measuring concert. Uh He didn't even write that. But all the headlines said... Elon said we should have a penis measuring concept con contest with him and Zuck, but it was like a bot page or yeah. like a, a fan page that yeah. wrote it and then he retweeted it and was just like, I don't even know what I'm right. He said some kind of silly pun, but he didn't even write it. So I'm like, 
everything we read is already a bunch of BS. There's like an obvious, there's an obvious, like, we like this, we don't like that. But ultimately, there was a period where we didn't really like Zuckerberg either. Mm -hmm. Isn't he a billionaire? Don't we hate those people? Mm -hmm. And then don't we hate social media? We think it's bad, blah, blah, blah. Zuckerberg put um, emojis on his own kids on a post that he posted on his Instagram. And, like, nobody freaked out about that. Like, he's the one who created this whole thing. Or he bought it, really. Um, We didn't get upset about that either when he bought Instagram. Right. And stole Snapchat's whole thing. Right. And stole and bought WhatsApp and Mm -hmm. stole this and stole that. But when the other billionaire... That's the thing. Like, they all do the same thing. And we just pick and choose who we like and for what purpose in what moment. But Threads is not any different than anything else that we already have. It's not. That's the thing I don't like. It's all BS. What I will say is a lot of people that I follow on Instagram that I've now seen on Threads have decided to take Threads and make it their toxic account. Mm. Just saying whatever they want and being all chatty and whatever they want. You know? I think that's interesting. That they because no one else is gonna follow the the close friends that they have on Instagram aren't on threads. It's so new that they can be a new person on threads. I think that's interesting. I think that's weird of them to do because it's connected to your Instagram. It is connected to you. But you could choose like there's a button that said follow everybody that ends up on threads. Sure. You can turn that off. Yeah, but if I go to threads, I will know. That that's you. Like, there's some people who are Twitter followers only, mm-hmm. and then there's some people who I'm like, I I don't need to ever hear you speak. Right. I just want to see your BBL. <laughs> so I go I go to, I go to Instagram for that. But will I follow you on Twitter? No. And then there's some people who have an identity on Twitter that doesn't correlate with who they really are everywhere else. Yeah, I think you see that's what, I'm what it is. But if you go on threads, I automatically know what your Instagram is. So now you can't disassociate them. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. So you be, you're also, not you, but like the person who's using it as their toxic account. Now we know the jig. You're just toxic. Yeah. Could be funny. It's probably funny. But I don't know. I just, I just don't see, I don't see it. I don't see what I don't see the game. I've opened it like twice. I've used it a couple times to see what what's up, but it's Twitter. It's t- yeah. it's poorly made Twitter. Yeah. I don't even get when people are like it looks good. What looks good? It looks like a like a dumbed down version of an actual good app. It's just by that I don't also don't use. Right. <laughs> or at least not even good A fully fleshed out app Right yeah 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 You know what I mean I don't know Social media man Best of luck to everybody Goodbye Thanks for listening If you like what you saw Please make sure to subscribe to us on Instagram At MOI Podcast And please check us out on our YouTube channel By searching Men on the Internet Network Thank you.